I'm going to take you through, um, well, go from from one of the smaller countries in South America, Bolivia, to one of the to one of the largest, um, to to Argentina, um, and I'm going to take you on a tour from north to south and show you some of the, the landscape and wildlife highlights of this um, very spectacular um, country. So. Argentina, as I mentioned, one of the largest countries in, in South America, it measures 3,700 kilometers from, from north to south. So that's the equivalent of, um, sort of Shetland down to the Canary Islands, if you wanted to stretch out the United Kingdom um, to, um, to, 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 to the same length as, as Argentina. And um, it's from and it's its widest point, it's over 1,400 kilometers from, from west to east. Um, and few countries can really boast such a variety of topography and a wonderful diversity of, of habitats and spectacular uh, wildlife um, as well. So we fly into, into Buenos Aires, the, um, the, the, the capital of, of Argentina. Um, we, well, the BA used to fly direct, but now they, they stop over briefly in Rio de Janeiro um, en route. But we try to use BA where possible. If not, then you can fly with, with Iberia uh, via Madrid or Lufthansa via um, Frankfurt. So there are quite a few options um, to take you to, um, to, to, to Buenos Aires. Um, and say so it's a very varied country. Um, some of the, the, the highlights and, um, of, of Argentina include the Grassic Falls right up in the north of the country. You have Bushwire right down in the south. Um, and um, Peninsula Valdez is a fantastic area for, um, for, for wildlife. And Los Glaciares National Park, um, some of the homes, some of the most spectacular landscapes um, in, in the whole of the country. And in Salta and the Andes, not actually that far from, um, from the Paz in, in um, Bolivia that Jose was showing you earlier. So in Argentina, the habitat had been such a, a huge country with such a um, um, it has a, a, a wide range of habitats from tropical um, up, in, up in the north to uh, subantarctic down down in the south and from sea level um, to the to the dizzy heights of the of the Andes. A very varied country with, with lots lots to enjoy. We fly into as mentioned to, into Buenos Aires um, and and the capital of, of Argentina um, and. Um, well, it's, it's a very interesting city um, historically and culturally. Um, there's also some great wildlife and some birding to be to be done um, on the on the edge of Buenos Aires at Costanera Sur. This is the one one of the most exciting um, urban uh, reserves in the in the whole of South America. It's a remnant of the extensive marshes that used to stretch along the length of the of the Platte River, and it's a great place um, to unwind after your long flight. And to enjoy some of the some um, of your first uh, South American birds, you should see Guira cuckoo um, um, pretty easily um, at Costanera. Saw that often hopping along the the, the wall um, along the edge of the promenade that um, edges the um, the nature reserve. The common bird of the area also is the rufous hornero. Um, uh, a, a, a song thrush sized brown bird that runs around on the ground. It's actually Argentina's national bird, um, also known as the as the oven bird. It's um, having to build in this um, um, mud uh, nest. But in particular, uh, Costanera saw excels for its for its water birds. Um, there are plenty of silver teal um, out on the um, out on the lakes. Um, there are uh, Southern screamers are uh, quite common here as well. Limpkins, a variety of herons, um, the beautiful uh, great grebe, the largest of the of the world's um, grebes, um, is, is is frequently seen here, um, along with uh, white winged and, and red gar red garter coot. Um, there are uh, there are snail kites. There's a, a whole plethora of different birds to to enjoy. One of the key species to find, not, not an easy bird, but certainly worth the um, uh, worth looking for, is the spectacular many-coloured rush tyrant, which has to have the from the, the accolade of being the world's most spectacular uh, member of the flycatcher family. They live around the edges of the of, of the reed beds at um, the reserve, 
Um, and um, yeah, if we're lucky, hopefully we'll spot one. But after all of our tours start with, with a night in, in Buenos Aires, and then we head out from Buenos Aires to explore um, some of the other areas of, uh, of the country. Um, at the moment, our two main tours to Argentina um, is a trip that encompasses the Andes Mountains and Iguazu Falls. Um, and we have another down further south in the country, um, Argentine Patagonia, um, that explores Peninsula Valdez, Glacieras National Park, and, and Ushuaia. And I'm going to now show you just some of the some of the wildlife and scenic highlights of those regions. So from Buenos Aires, we fly across to the to the town of, of Salta, um, up in the um, lies in the at the foot of the Andes in the northwestern corner of Argentina, and say not that far as the Condor flies from from the Paz and, and those mountains, the Andes Mountains up in Bolivia that um, Jose uh, was showing us earlier. Um, and it, it's, it sits at an altitude of around 4,000 feet and offers easy access to the to the Andes Mountains and access right up into the high tops of the of the Andes. You can climb up to 16,000 or more feet um, from from Salta and pass through a, a range of habitats on roof from the from the cloud forests of the of the Yungus to say, the Dizian heights of the of, of the Puna and the and the Altiplano. Say so, as well as the wildlife, the landscapes here are, are absolutely uh, spectacular. Um, and um, from Salta, we'll we'll start the climb up into the Andes, starting um, with time to explore the the Yungus cloud forest. This is a moss draped forest. It's a it's um, a, a damp, wet, wet area and home to Syacatanaja, buff brown foliage, galena, brown cap, red star, bridges, guan, uh, and a wide variety of other birds. From the Yungus, we can climb higher up into the um, up into the Andes. As you climb higher, you start to enter uh, the rain shadow, less water around vegetation uh, changes. Again, it's wonderful scenery as you climb up um, into the up into the mountains. There are burrowing parrots, a common at a sort of mid, mid, mid elevation. We'll be searching the uh, fast flowing uh, streams and rivers uh, for the beautiful uh, torrent duck, the male here on the right with the black and white face and the and the female on the left with the rufousy breast and, and and face, one of the one of the key birds to find on on this trip. And I say as we as we climb in in altitude, the habitat changes. It's drier at mid elevation. You have the mid elevation cactus forest of Los Cardones National Park, um, home to a, a variety of, of 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 other species, including the giant hummingbird, the the largest of the of the hummingbird species which you best look for around flowering tobacco bushes. Overhead, um, Andean condors soar, um, and um, we'll be looking out as well for, for a woodpecker in a, in, a, in a habitat that's pretty much devoid of, of, of wood. And this is the Andean flicker, um, has uh, more of a habit of our, of our green woodpecker and hops around on the ground um, looking for ants and other insects. There are a few hummingbirds up here, including the beautiful red-tailed comet with its long uh, iridescent copper-colored tail. And as we continue to climb higher, it, the, the, the habitats continue to dry out as we get further and further, deeper into the rain shadow. The landscapes get more spectacular. As well as the birds, there are some mammals to enjoy as well. Um, the guanaco um, is, is common um, at the lower and mid altitudes. And um, we should see the cunia as well, the more the more graceful um, relative of the of the guanaco. And so from um, from Salta, at four thousand feet, we can climb up and beyond sixteen thousand feet high at the on at the Al Atiplano. This is the um, Abra del Ake Pass at sixteen thousand two hundred feet. The air is quite thin up here; you have to take it easy, but. The, the views are spectacular and some interesting wildlife to enjoy as well, including the, the mountain viscacha, a cross between a, a, a rabbit and a, and a kangaroo. Some interesting birds up here, a gray bellied seed snipe. Um, it's quite uh, commonly seen if you're very lucky, except if you uh, search the, the damper 
wetter bogs um, um, areas, then you may even see diadem sandpiper plover, one of the most sought after um, waders in the whole of South America. Another of the beautiful waders of the region is the tawny throated dotterel, which also lives on these high um, altiplano uh, um, um, steppe grasslands. Um, and then we, we can get up as high as um, Lake Poz Pozuelos, uh, which sits on the altiplano surrounded by spectacular uh, mountains. And here we'll be looking for um, Puna uh, flamingo, also called James's flamingo, um, as well as a wide variety of, 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 of waders and, and other species at all as well. Sorry. Um, so, so that gives, so you can climb up to 16,000 feet and then we'll gradually make our way back down again. And on the, um, on the um, Andes to Igrasu tour, and you fly across to, to Igrasu. I'll show you some slides of Igrasu a little bit later. But moving south from, from the Andes, um, we move south to another key wildlife hotspot in, in Argentina, which is Peninsula Valdez. Um, and we include the, the peninsula on our Argentine Patagonia um, tour. Um, and we go here not only, um, mo mo mostly primarily for, for the mammals, actually, as well as, well as a few birds. The key species to, 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 to see is the uh, southern right whale. Um, and they gather here uh, between July and November. And they gather here to, to in the sheltered waters um, of the bays around the peninsula of Valdez to, to mate and give birth. And over a thousand whales gather here every year. Um, and then they head south into Antarctica um, between um, from November, December um, through the, the austral summer to feed down in Antarctica before moving back up again to this region to mate and give birth. They're, they're very easy to see um, around the peninsula of Valdez and will take out a, a boat trip to, to look for it. So they, they are mostly around the Golfo Nuevo um, and, and, and the surrounding area of, of there. But we fly into Trelu um, on, on that pit part of the trip. And then we move down also to Punta Tombo, uh, one of the largest uh, Magellanic penguin colonies in, in the whole of, of South America with over 200,000 pairs. It's really very impressive place, very noisy, very vibrant place to, um, to, to visit. There are elephant seals uh, along, the, along the coastline of the peninsula of Valdez. This is the most northerly population of, of southern elephant seals um, any, every, every, anywhere in the world. And we all know now about the, the killer whales that patrol the beaches here in the hope of snatching uh, an unfortunate elephant seal pup. Although it's actually very difficult to, to, to see that uh, spectacular, um, uh, spectacular um, uh, occurrence, um, and you really have to be in the right place at the, at the right time to see that. But orcas are quite often seen patrolling along along the beach line, and there are plenty of other birds and other wildlife to see here as well, including burrowing owl, which is quite a widespread bird in the drier um, areas of of, of, of Argentina. And for Peninsula Valdez, we head uh, further south um, to Los Glacieres National Park um, in the southern Andes and down to where the Andes pretty much disappear into, um, into the southern ocean down at Ushuaia. So at Los Glacieres National Park, we're visiting really to, to not only to enjoy the wildlife, but also to enjoy the spectacular scenery um, of this, this particular area. Um, and we're meeting up with the, with the Andes Mountains uh, once again. Here they're edged with the Nothofagus forest of, of, of the southern beach, home to some interesting birds such as the horned-tailed Rayadito, Austral Blackbird, Chilean Flicker, and an Austral uh, Pygmy Owl. Um, and here we're looking at some of the most spectacular uh, mountains in the range, in particular Mount, uh, Mount Fitzroy. We'll also visit the spectacular Moreno Glacier. Um, there are 12 glaciers altogether in Los Glacieres National Park, but the Moreno is without doubt the most, the most spectacular of those uh, with a wall of ice um, over uh, 70, 70 meters high. Once again, we'll be looking out for Andean condors um, trolling the skies here. 
But if, you're, if there is a dead cow in a ranch, you might be lucky enough to see up to 30 of these spectacular birds down, um, down scavenging. In other areas, we'll be looking for um, uh, other birds such as the such as the lesser rear, and on the lakes, um, we should see uh, black necked, uh, the beautiful black necked swan, long tailed meadow lark, another another bird to look out for. Again, quite widespread in in much of of, of Argentina. Um, if you're doing a, a tailor made tour, we can do tailor made trips to Argentina. One well, of the group tours I mentioned. If you're doing a tailor made trip, you can nip over the border into Chile um, to um, to Torres del Paine National Park, one of the most famous uh, parks in the whole of, of, of South America, and only a, only a stone's throw from um, Los Los Glaciares. And as well as enjoying the spectacular uh, landscapes and the mountain range here. This is the place to go if you want to track the pumas and look for pumas. Um, and you stand. We're unlucky, in fact, not to see puma. Um, if you go to the right place in Torres del Paine, you, you need to have a puma tracker, but the animals uh, are now habituated to people. You stand a very good chance of seeing. But this is pretty much the only place in the world um, where you have a very good chance of seeing um, this spectacular big cat. In from Los Glaciares, we move further south still to, to the city of Ushuaia, um, which is um, the, um, the southernmost uh, city of Tautas, the southernmost city in the world. It's not really big. It's not a big city. It's a pretty much just a small town in, and very easy to explore. Um, but it sits uh, right on the edge of the Beagle Channel with the mountains of the, the Andes behind. And it offers um, some pretty much sub, sub antarctic um, habitats to, to enjoy and, and, and a different range of, of wildlife too. So we've got um, dolphin gull here, very one of, the, one of the most beautiful gulls in the region, the lovely kelp goose, um, flightless steamer duck, and you also look, probably see its, uh, its flying cousin. We'll do a boat trip out onto the Beagle Channel, but you should see um, Black-browed albatross, as well as southern giant petrel, full um, southern giant full uh, petrel, sorry, uh, Magellanic diving petrel, Magellanic penguin. We'll take a trip into the um, Tierra del Fuego uh, National Park again to look at the landscape, but also do some bird watching. And the this is a great place to to look for Magellanic uh, woodpecker, one of the largest woodpeckers in in South America. Then we end. Or a great place to end after you've been to Argentina and explored some of the other regions is to spend a few days up at the Iguazu Falls. Um, so from the southernmost point of Argentina in Ushuaia, you're going to end up in the Iguazu Falls, which is nearly um, Argentina's most uh, most northerly point. Um, and the Iguazu is up near the border of, um, of Brazil, Argentina and, and Paraguay. One of the most spectacular natural wonders of the world. Um, there are over there are 275 different cascades from waterfalls um, here, and this is the, the biggest of them, the, the so-called Devil's Throat, where over two million liters of water pour over um, this cascade every every second. Over the tops of the waterfall, you'll see wheeling flocks of great dusky swifts. Um, these are the birds that dive behind the the water to. Uh, to, to, uh, to nest, the ones we see on all the all the David Attenborough programs, flying through the curtains of water to their their nesting sites. Um, in the tropical forests, and now we're back into the hot, humid um, uh, tropical forests here. It's not. I would, I would would recommend a visit to Iguazu not just for the waterfall itself, but the birding around the falls is is spectacular. We'll arrange a guide for you to take you into the into the park first thing in the morning before the before the crowds of visitors arrive, visitors arrive, and you should see Toco Tucum without any problem. The beautiful blonde crested woodpecker, hopefully a swallowtailed mannequin, and then a short distance away from um, the falls, there's a hummingbird garden where there are hummingbird feeders uh, set out, and here you'll get to see a, a wonderful, dazzling variety of different hummingbirds, including the swallowtail hummingbird here, one of them, one of the loveliest of the, of the family. And as well as the birds, of course, there's lots of other wildlife to explore and to enjoy. Plenty of, of really interesting butterflies and insects and some mammals too. 
um, the South American coati uh, here is commonly seen um, around around the falls and very often around the picnic area as uh, these these animals do scavenging on on scraps from the from the tourists. So there's it's a great place really to to finish your holiday. Um, a nice mix of spectacular scenery with the falls and some wonderful wildlife as well. So I'll end there and say thank you very much for listening. Um, Argentina really is a very spectacular country. It's one of those places you certainly can't do um, in in one trip. Um, and um, yeah, very certainly recommend um, um, time there. So thank you very much. And I'll end there. And if you have any questions, then please please do let us know. Thank you.